Right. Um, seems sort of quiet now, actually, after all the... Do have too much excitement now? It's, it's sort of the verge between too much too exciting and too boring, I think. Uh, yeah. The moment, because we're in summer mode, obviously. We are. And uh, the peaks and drops of, of excitement activities, you say, I dare say we'll be back on the uh, on the excitement front tomorrow as, uh, as we find out how the, uh, the EU proposal is going to be put, voted on in the... Uh, in the Greek Parliament, and then of course later in the week in several other European councils and parliaments as well. So, um, yeah, we won't be short of things to talk about going forward. That's you wonder why after after that referendum, you why wonder why anybody's voting on anything? It doesn't really actually mean anything. It's uh, like you're, only, you're only allowed to vote one way. If you don't vote that way, it just happens anyway. Well, that's that's been some people's criticism of the EU as a whole, hasn't it? You remember, you remember the, the you keep, yes, you keep voting on something until you come up with the right answer. Yeah, Ireland and Portugal can testify, so uh, yeah, but that's probably a conversation for another day. Right. Okay. As far as uh, data this morning is concerned, uh, what struck your eye? Well, there's there's lots of uh, lots of numbers out today. Um, I've just picked up on a few things. So first of all, the one that probably garnered the most headlines early early on in the session. Um, Eurozone industrial production for May, this is the month on month change, down by 0.4%, minus 0.4%, versus the forecast of, of, a, of a positive number of plus 0.2. So, um, is QE working? Well, possibly not, judged on that metric. And uh, um, once they, get, they <coughs> look at the, the people in the ECB can uh, sit back and take stock of, uh, of anything other than Greece, they might be concerned about that as they might well be um, with with these two German inflation numbers that we come to next. First of all, the CPI, the Consumer Price Index for June. Again, we look at the month-on-month -month change, down 0.1%. True, that was in line by, uh, with the forecast of minus 0.1%, um, but it's hardly hardly uh, inspiring, is it, um, when you're you know trying to reflate and re reinvigorate uh, uh, the European economy. Um, year on year, well, it was at least a positive number, Plus 0.3 percent, against an e equally in line with the uh, with the forecast of plus 0.3 percent. But once again, if the if the most proactive economy in Europe can only muster 0.3 percent annualised inflation, it's not uh, you know that, that's not really going to get the baby bath as we we. So see. it's basically a double nightmare: uh, uh, no, bad bad industrial production and bad inflation or lack of inflation. We just um, we need something, a real shot in the arm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, we stay with inflation because they've also had the um, the ECB's um, uh, fa favoured measure of inflation, the uh, the hybrid index of consumer prices (HICP). Um, so this again, the June month and month figure once again, you know, uh, in the negative. So deflation minus 0.2 percent, again in line with the forecast. So no worse than expected. Um, but perhaps more worrying still is the fact that. That year on year, by this measure, which you, which the ECB sort of puts great store by, as I say, we're only seeing plus 0.1 percent, again in line with the forecast, but still, you know, it's a bit uh, flatlining, isn't mm. it? Um, and then uh, here into the UK, um, and it, <laughs> an equally disappointing uh, inflation outlook. H here we had uh, producer price indexes for, or indices for June. Um, again, the month on month number flat, 0.0 percent. Um, forecast was hardly exciting at, at plus 0.1, but it was expected to grow. Um, the prior read being plus 0.1 percent. So that's uh, something for the Bank of England to think about. Meantime, um, Mark Carney was speaking in Parliament and and seemed to sort of contradict the data, saying that uh, the time for rate rises is moving closer. It's obviously a very open-ended well, statement. What, what is he smoking? Well, we talked about this in the office, and, and I wonder whether they're looking through the actual headline inflation data and perhaps keeping an eye on things like wage growth and employment. Um, you know, we've, we've taken the view in the past. Yeah, but you, you know, you raise interest rates. So, you know, it's a quarter percent or a half percent or whatever it is over the next year. And you'll have you'll have PPI at minus one percent and minus two percent. You know, this is not the way to go, is it? Well, that's very true, and that's also why our house view is that we, we don't expect to see interest rates this side of interest rate rises. That is this side of Christmas in either the UK or the US. Okay. But uh, we shall see. Anyway, if we move on to uh, the, the European movers. Um, a light in Germany um, again. Uh, first of all, uh, RWE, um, a big German power generator and utility, uh, 19 euros 58. RWE is the ticker, very handily, uh, down 3.12%. Uh, and why? Well, UBS has come out with uh, a couple of notes today um, about uh, European utilities and their relationship with uh, coal and and liquid natural gas prices. They've downgraded the European generators on an expectation of falling coal and LNG prices. Um, they cite rising supply and Asian demand weakness, uh, and they've cut the EPS view on the uh, generating sector by 5 to 10%. It seems odd, doesn't it, that, that falling mm. 
um, fuel prices should actually be negative for, for power generators. But the, I think the feeling is that it compresses their margins and they, they can't get away with charging more, which they would like well, to Well, it do. sort of looks as though it's just a bit of, it's, it's, a, it's a way of uh, um, coming up with a proxy to the Asian uh, contagion situation, or at least the China contagion. Uh, yes, I think I think that's true, and at the same time, you've got you know increased production of of, uh, of oil and gas around the globe, um, and so you know we, we've got a cooling demand and an increasing supply. It's not likely to be good for, for energy prices. Um, and staying with uh, sort of a China theme, that th if I can say it, feeds back into Germany. Um, two of the big automakers under pressure today: BMW, um, 93 euros 86 down one. 0.53% and Daimler, mm -hmm. uh, 81 euro 75 down almost 2%. Why are they lower? Well, broker Aviate flags the, the risk to profits to the sector after the Chinese Auto Association slashed their sales numbers from plus 7% to uh, plus 3%, implying no growth in the second half of uh, 2015 in that key auto market. Now, that, that Chinese news is not new news, but I think it's just suddenly registering with people who's, who perhaps have been distracted elsewhere about what that really means. Um, for uh, for these large German uh, auto manufacturers, they've been under pressure. They are directly China related, and I expect we'll see uh, could do more of that kind of thing coming forward. Okay, and uh, on to the M and A, which is uh, quite juicy today. Yeah, it is actually um, a story that broke uh, after the close last night in the U.S. Uh, Singhua Unigroup, I hope I pronounced that properly, of China, said to have pre prepared a bid, uh, a twenty-three billion dollar bid for Micron MU in the U.S. Uh, they've traded after hours up to 1965, up um, 11.58%. Um, the bid would be worth around $21 per share to Micron shareholders, so st still a reasonable premium. Um, for those that don't know, Micron is uh, one of the major players in the dynamic random access memory and NAND flash memory uh, chip space, so solid memories that don't move that, uh, that are more and more popular in, uh, in a whole range of, uh, of uh, devices. The 52-week range for Micron has been basically between 17 and $36. Um, so that offer might be seen a bit on the low side. If you average those two prices, you get somewhere just over 26. I suspect that's uh, an, an opening uh, sell. Well, no, but the market could have just gone to $30. I mean, it could have done, you know. It, it could, was, uh, but it, may, maybe, maybe it will later in the day. Possibly, um, but there's always a bit of controversy, isn't there, when a Chinese company bids for a US one. Micron said they hadn't had any official contact yet. Uh, if a bid was successful, it would be the uh, the largest takeover of a, of a US company by a Chinese one. Um, it has happened in the past. Of course, Lenovo's bought uh, things like the IBM uh, PC business, and there one or two other ex good examples of that. If there's no security issue, then probably uh, the US Congress will and the Senate will, will look kindly on it. Probably, though, tr truth told, with the US election coming up, it's another one of those decisions that would be deferred into 2016. Um, but nonetheless, do keep an eye on the space. Um, the, the sector's been trending lower. Um, the, the other big name in the space is Sandis. They, they've been heading down recently as well since November 2014. Maybe their, their uh, price will perk up this afternoon as well. That's SNDK, so that's another one to keep an eye on this afternoon. Great, all right. Something else to look forward to. And. Uh on the data points. Well, today is, uh, we've at least got something juicy, half juicy to get our teeth into. Retail sales for June, uh, forecast of an of a improvement of plus 0.3% versus the prior read of, of plus 1.2%. The, the main number was a, was a big surprise to the upside and an outlier. 75% of, uh, of the time the numbers come in between minus 1 and plus 1%. So I think we're expecting normal service to be resumed today. But a, but uh, a positive number of 0.3% or slightly higher would be good news. Um, and then uh, if you're a night owl and you want to stay up to uh, till just after uh, 12 o'clock London time tonight, uh, 1 o'clock London time tonight, sorry, you can see on here Esther George from the Canvas, Kansas Fed even uh, speaking on monetary policy and the economy. So Kansas know. being obviously the centre of the financial world. Tonight. Well, you know, it, well, they... they well, it's got a Fed, hasn't it? So, so you know, and, and a stock exchange, I think. So, uh, so um, he's, he's got some bearing. But yeah, but she's speaking, and uh, again, people, I'm sure we'll be reading about what she said in the morning. Okay, and uh, the levels. Okay, well, I've just picked on one stock um, in terms of pre-market movers uh, today, and that's a company called Navian Corp. N A V I is the ticker. Um, after hours, fifteen dollars eighty-nine down thirteen, almost thirteen and a half percent. Uh, why? Well, it's a loan management and servicing company, and it sharply cut its guidance uh, for, for Q2 2015. It actually trimmed its 
forecast by 30%. So it's a wonder that they haven't been um, hit harder. Not entirely sure why it's done that. It's not a small uh, concern. This is a $7.5 billion market cap company, um, one of the bigger players in the space. So it's probably got a bit of a ripple through effect, or likely to have a ripple through effect in the rest of the sector. Uh, it would be very interesting to see how they trade um, in uh, the market proper. They've got a big presence in the student loan market. I don't know if that's going to be a factor, but we'll see. Um, and then in terms of levels today, um, a little bit of a retracement in uh, European equity prices. So we've gone with 6,700 uh, on the downside in the FTSE place, 67.50. The DAX, a smidge lower, 11,400 on the downside, plays 11,465. Of course, it was a different story in the US last night, both the Dow and the S&P sharply higher and the tech stocks were leading the way. Uh, so we're uh, 20.88 as our downside level uh, in the S&P plays 2108 uh, on the upside. I haven't been talking about a level above 2100 for some time. And in the Dow, we played 17890 on the downside against 18,000 even as a round number, if nothing else, on the upside. Currency, uh, well, all a little bit, uh, a little bit flat to be honest. Um, Euro US dollar 109.97 now on the downside plays 110.45 to the upside. Uh, still probably got a, a weakening bias there against the dollar. Um, just tighten the range slightly in, uh, in the Aussie versus the US dollar. So 74.12 now on the downside plays 74.50 on the upside. Just looking for some cues either way there. Um, the yen um, slightly weaker against the dollar. So 123.10 now uh, is our uh, downside level playing 123.70 to the upside. And cable did spike on the back of Mark Carney's comments. So 155.40 now, the downside plays 156.05 on the upside. But to, but to be honest, if I had to take a, a view, I'd say fade the rally. But uh, They believed him. How could they believe him? I, but, um, I think sometimes they just, the market just... Uh, well, I suppose it's an easy, I mean, against the euro, is it, or well, I suppose against the euro and um, the dollar at the moment, it's sort of relatively easy. Yeah, if, if, you, if, you, if you take the view that uh, the UK rates will move first, then it makes sense to be long cable. But, yeah. uh, well, we'll see what happens on that. Darren Sinden, market commentator, Animal Markets, thanks for your insights today. And we'll be back with similar insights tomorrow at 1 o'clock.